Good morning, everybody. Okay, I want to. Um, I'm going to teach uh, teach you guys something real fast um, while I'm answering Michael's question this morning, which is um, pre qualification. Let's talk about pre qualification for a second. Okay, um, pre qualification is really. I, I want you guys to get in the habit of being the connectors. Okay, you don't have to have all of the answers yourself. Okay, you are not expected to know about every down payment option, every loan program, every minimum credit score, if, if, all that kind of thing. That's not your job. Okay, your job is to get into relationship with the people who know all that stuff. Okay, so for example, when somebody comes to you and says, hey, I want to buy a home, say, great, have you, um, have you had an opportunity to visit with a lender yet or a mortgage specialist yet? Which most of the time they're going to say no. Okay, and then you will say, great, I've got a couple of great ones, let me introduce you. And you do like a little three-way email introducing everyone, that way you're connected and they're connected and everyone is, you've assembled a new team, okay? When they, get, when they submit all of their documentation for pre-approval or pre-qualification, um, and, and those terms are sometimes used interchangeably, but Every lender has a slightly different method of a different definition, which Greta, you're, I can tell you're even without seeing your face, you're like rolling your eyes about that. I don't blame you, <laughs> right? Um, the definitions are a little unclear, okay? And I only say unclear because everyone, there's not like a universal definition, okay? In my eyes, pre-qualification is basically me going to Michael, let's pretend Michael is a lender, and say, hey, I make 100 grand a year and my, I got good credit. And then Michael writes me a letter that says, hey, this person can borrow 300 grand. Okay, pre-approval is when I show the man the documentation, he runs it through the machine and says, you can go to 300 grand, right? So sometimes you might see pre-qualification on the screen, on the, on the letter. Sometimes you may see pre-approval on the letter. Whatever you see, the good rule of thumb is to call that lender anyway and introduce yourself. Say, hey, we're going to be hopefully working together with Joe and Sarah. And um, you're telling me that they can afford uh, uh, to borrow $300,000. Just wanted to check. Um, have you looked at all their documentation yet? And they'll tell you everything you need to know based on that answer. So they will say, oh, no, they're impossible to get a hold of. And the guy's only told me he has decent credit you know, roughly what his income is. Okay, so I know that we're not quite done with that examination. Or they'll say, yes, this is super well-qualified, super cooperative, I've already seen his tax returns, he's, he's super organized, it's gonna be a simple deal, guys, right? So you're gonna find out everything you need to find out based on that question. Okay, I want a couple things to happen. I want the, um, uh, the borrower to not only find out what they can afford, from a loan perspective. I also want to know what type of loan they're going to get. I also want to know what their down payment, what they're likely to do for a down payment. And I also want to know what the roughly, what the closing costs are. Now I want all that stuff up front. Number one, I'm kind of testing the lender to be honest, because, and, and, and I don't want you to hear this from an arrogant standpoint, but I, I was, I'm good at what I do and I'm going to make sure nothing screws up. Now I need to all my partners in this transaction to have the same attitude. So this is what I expect of a lender. Either you do it or you don't do it. And if you don't do it, we don't get to work together. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I want to know all of those things because when this guy wants to write or this woman wants to write a contract, I may not be able to reach you. So I need to have this understanding ahead of time. Now, um, so a good response would be, okay, Michael, this guy is pre-approved up to 300 on a 10% down uh, payment conventional loan, and the closing costs are $7,300 estimated, and um, the monthly payment is, is, uh, is uh, $1,700, okay? Part B of that is for the borrower to look at that monthly payment and say, am I comfortable? So just because the bank will issue $1,700 um, on a, a, as a payment based on this family's you know, credit score and debt income ratios and all that kind of thing, 
The question is not, will the bank issue it? Is does that number fit into the man or that family's um, budget? So in Michael's scenario, his borrower says, I want to spend X. Okay. I want to spend $2,000 a month in, in my payment. So you need to give the lender a rough estimate of what the taxes will be in that area. So I think a good rough estimate that's probably errs on the conservative side, maybe Pam, you can throw your opinion on this too. I would say probably somewhere around 1.25% of the sales price is what you could expect for a tax amount. It's not an exact science. It probably errs on the conservative side, but I would say somewhere around 1.25% of the sales price is what you could expect as a, as a tax amount. So if they buy a half a million dollar house, their taxes are probably gonna be somewhere between 6,500, somewhere in the neighborhood of 6,500, okay? So you would say to the lender, all right, let's, let's say rough tax amount is 1.25% of the sales price. The man wants to spend no more than $2,000. He's got no more than 10% of a down payment. You, you go capital. Okay, and then you gotta understand, Michael, that at that moment, you now have a free, there's nothing you can do in that transaction. Meaning the next phase of the transaction is in somebody else's hands. And then you should turn your attention to a new prospect, right? Sometimes uh, agents, we fall in love with our clients and we try to control things that we don't have any control over. And we forget that that deal goes through and the cash the, the cash is earned, the commission is earned, you got to start over with somebody brand new. So you want to have that stuff in the hopper too. Okay. Right. So in summary, it's not, it, it's, you got to figure out number one, what is, what will the bank issue the loan for? And number two, is the borrower comfortable with that amount? Right. Right. Does that make sense to everybody? So if the guy could afford a 10% down payment and borrow 300 grand, you should be looking at homes around 330 at most, okay? My advice to you is do not show people homes until you know what they can afford. Because 100 times out of 100, if somebody can afford a $300,000 home and you take them to a $400,000 home, they will like it. Yes, they will. <laughs> okay, the problem is they can't afford it. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Sure Why does no one want to show me their face today? What? What? What am I? Chuck liver? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I got one out of 14. Thank you. Yeah. Twantis, hey, you're off the hook. You're driving. Can I ask you one more question uh, sure. about my, my friend? He is tall. He is like almost seven feet tall. Um, former semi-pro basketball player. He really wants to find a house that has large architectural features. He doesn't want to have to duck down every door frame. So is there something when I'm searching in MLS, is there anything that, that might indicate anything like that, that I could, I, I could uh, key on, look for? Not um, really. I was going to say, Pam, do you want to answer that? Yeah, not really, unfortunately. And also something like that, if you're trying to look, if you're trying to, you know, set up his search or look on it, you know, unfortunately, you're affected by how well the agents enter information. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of them don't enter very much. Um, you know, there's there's a lot. So I, I, I tell clients I prefer to cast a wide net and then we can look at each individual home in that wide net and narrow it to narrow it down. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's going to be tough. You know, the door frame issue, that's a that's a tough one. Um, you know, um, because it, it's, at, and I don't know if that's, you know, his price range, but the the taller door frames I've seen have been in more recent builds. Yeah, you were, you were going in the exact same direction I was going, particularly if he's in San, if he's looking in Sandy Springs. Okay. Right. Did you know, did you find out if he's looking inside the perimeter or outside the perimeter? He says he doesn't want to be too far outside. Oh boy. So that's going to be an expensive house. Okay, because inside the perimeter of Sandy Springs, you're looking at a bunch of 1950s, 1960s ranches, small homes, small closets, old, and the owners of those properties are in this constant struggle 
to debate on whether they have a teardown or whether they want to plow money into it, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, especially over near like High Point and Glen Ridge and some of those properties, like they've got 400, 400 to $450,000 teardowns, right? Right. And if you go drop a hundred grand into it, you may not see that back, you know? And so it's a tricky market to be in. Um, and more than likely, if this guy is a seven footer and he needs, uh, you know, more architectural finishes and he wants, you know, big ceilings and all that stuff, this, this guy may be like an eight, nine million plus. And if he can't afford it, um, he may end up being in, um, like the, the community that I just sold my townhome in like last summer or earlier this year, like super high ceilings, but he's probably going to be in a townhome and he'll probably spend, you know, 500 or so. So the big thing right now is let, let's figure out what he can afford. Because right what, what, what he and wants then, and what he can afford are totally separate. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then I would look at maybe seeing if you can talk to a contractor who could tell you if it's possible to enlarge those uh, doors, you know, the, make them taller doors. I mean, they have to move headers up and that sort of thing. So you need more than a eight foot ceiling, you know, but that might be another alternative. That's right. That's right. Um, but remember that generally speaking, the closer you get to town, the more expensive of a property it's going to be. Um, particularly if you're over near like Chastain or you're over near like Riverside or something like that. I mean, he's, if, unless he's a million plus, he's not going to be over near Riverside. No, he's not quite there. Okay. Do you know what he, what he does for a living? Um, he, he works for the wireless telecommunications industry, uh, finding uh, cell tower sites. Uh, okay, so he uh, probably makes a hundred to one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, right? Yeah, maybe so a little he's more. Gonna, he's probably going to borrow like four hundred grand. Yeah, his his wife works full time too. So okay, you know. so I mean, he's probably not a million dollar buyer. He is not. Yeah. Um, so by the way, if the man ends up not liking, let's say for example, he's a five hundred thousand dollar buyer. And he looks to see what um, $500,000 will buy him and he's not overly impressed. Then what he might need to consider is a townhome uh, or a condo. And when you consider townhomes and condos, you now have <clears throat> a new expense that needs to be factored in, which is HOA fees. Right. He's in a condo now and wants to get out of that. He's, he's really looking for his own house. So he may just have to go a little farther outside of the perimeter than he wants. Well, it's, it, it all comes down to personal preference, right? Would you like, would you rather own, let's say a $500,000, you know, pretty much luxury town home near Chastain, or would you rather live in a palace in Lawrenceville, right? It's, it's all up to you, right? They build the palaces in Lawrenceville because some people like the palaces in Lawrenceville and they build the luxury town homes near Chastain because somebody would rather have that. You see what I'm saying? So it all comes down to this person's lifestyle and what their preferences are. Yeah. Okay, Any? Um, we kind of hit on a number of different topics there. Was that helpful for you guys? Do you have any follow-up questions on that? That's uh, super helpful for me. Thanks, Bill. Beautiful. What was the question? I'm sorry, I, I missed it. Uh, we were just talking basically about, um, one was the difference between pre-qualification and pre-approval. And we were talking a little bit about the lending process with respect to making sure that um, all parties are aware of what the down payment, what the uh, monthly expenses are, and not only what the bank will issue in the form of a loan amount, but what the, whether the client feels comfortable with that amount, whether the borrower feels comfortable with that amount. So it's very possible that the bank would issue, let's say two grand a month, but maybe according to this person's budget, um, maybe they only want to spend $1,800 a month. Well, if that's the case, then the number of dollars that they gave from a budget perspective, the lender gave, is too high. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And the most important takeaway here is do not show property to people they can't afford. They will like it. And if you show somebody a $400,000 home and they can only afford a $300,000 home, it's downhill from there because you will walk them into the $300,000 home and they'll be like, this place is too small. It doesn't have enough updates, blah, 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 blah. And they'll be pissed off the rest of their life. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And also I'll, I'll throw this out there is 
we have no idea where these people are coming from. Okay. There was a day, um, I'll tell this story very, very quickly. There was a day I wa I, I showed two, I had two appointments this day. First day or first, first appointment, I showed a $700 a month, one bedroom, one bath rental in Sandy Springs. I walk the woman into the house, starts bawling uncontrollably. Okay. Literally could not stop her. Okay. And finally I said, what's going on? Are you okay? And she says, I've never been able to afford a place as nice as this. Hmm. Okay. Wow. We just don't know where these people are coming from. Okay. So later that day, I show a $700,000 house to another buyer or to a buyer. That first one was a renter uh, to a buyer. And I walk her into the closet. I'm a pretty young agent at this time. I say, look how big this closet is. The closet was bigger than the house I showed earlier that day. Okay. And I said, gosh, this is such a big closet. She looked at me. She's like, this is the smallest closet I've ever had. You just don't know where these people are coming from. Okay. So remain judge, judgment free, okay? Just ask a lot of questions, be kind, don't judge, and, and get them what they want. Make sense? All right, that's, this is the cool part about this business is we get to be a part of those moments, right? Make sense? It does. All right. Um, let's do some role play. What do you say? Who wants to do some role play today? Um, I would, I have a request on, um, wait, on a, um, <clears throat> on a role play. Click. Okay. All, all requests, uh, come with the acknowledgement that you're participating. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. okay. Um, but I, I'm, I'm not quite sure how to, how to do this though. So uh, I might, have to, can I be the, you know, the guy? Yeah, I'll walk you through it. Nothing bad's going to happen today. I promise. Okay. So, um, I had a conversation with a guy who, um, he's a buyer. He's, um, not in a hurry. They want to find the right home. Um, but he doesn't want to sign a buyer brokerage agreement. Okay. And, um, because he's like, you know, um, that's just the way I work. And uh, so, you know, I, I had a, this, so this is a, I guess what's turned into a warm lead now for me. Okay. And so I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, I think he might've, he might be talking to some other agents um, and I, I've called and texted him several times without his response. And um this is over the past few weeks. And okay. yesterday I called, left a message and I said, I saw a listing come through uh, in the neighborhood you were looking at. Um, I'd be happy to talk with you about it. You know, call me back. He did call me back. I was, I was yep. like, oh my gosh, he's actually calling me back. Well, because uh, quite frankly, he doesn't care about you right now. He cares. About I know you. it's the, it's, it's the, the buyer is looking for the house. They want to eliminate the agent. Right. <laughs> right. Right. So, um, so That's I get like it. something so, Melba would say, right? So, yeah. So I was like, well, you know, quite frankly, I, you know, you know, I, I said, you know, we can, I can often find things that are on the market before they're listed, and, yep. you know, that was one of the points I mentioned. Um, but um, he's like, yeah, I just, you know, I mean. He's like, you know, I mean, if you bring me a home, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll buy it through you. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a man of my word that way. Is this an investor? Uh, no. Where did no. you find this person? I met them in the park. Um, I, so his mom lives in my neighborhood. Okay. And he and his wife and their two sons, they, they thought they would like to live in our neighborhood too. Um, however, they want more space than the homes in our neighborhood can accommodate. They want, you know, so they want a little higher caliber home. Okay, um, so what I'm, what I'm hearing is you may have asked for the, 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 um, you've never actually showed this guy any homes, right? Never showed him, but I did send him, 
Um, I got his email. I, I've been asking for his email and he, he didn't send it to me until yesterday, until I okay. talked to him. Good. All right. I know I don't mean any judgment on this. Okay. It's okay. They, um, if you ask for information and they don't like volunteer it right away, like an email address, you're yeah. going to have to barter for it. Okay. And you barter for it by offering some type of value. Right. right? Could I email you a link to my mobile app so you can search for property? Something like that. Right. Can I email you a buyer guide that you can take a peek at it? I'm not interested in, in that. I can I can find the homes I need to. I don't need your app. You don't need the app. Okay. So are we moving yeah. into the role play? I kind of did. Yeah. Okay. So um he so I, I want to set a, a little bit more of a clear stage because with this person, he's very non-committal, right? And right. A non-committal person doesn't want paperwork up front, right. right? So what this man needs or wants is to get access to the homes. Okay. Right. So so um, I'm trying to think of where where a good place to go with the with the um, with the role play would be. So have you done a home buyer seminar with him? No. So like a, a buyer consultation? No, I said um, I would love to. You know, set up. You know. 10, 15 minutes with you so we could go over, I could, you know, get a better, clearer picture of what, what you're looking for. And, um, you know, so that I, I could properly search for you. And, and he has, he's been resistant to tell you that. Yeah. He said, he's, he said, well, I'll, I'll just tell you, you know, um, I want a <clears throat> four or five bedroom, uh, three fifty to five fifty range. Um, no, stucco. huh? It's way too vague. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I'm like, okay. I'm like, that's quite a range. But um, so yeah, and he gave me some other um let me see. I'm looking for my my email that I sent him. Um, so I would say this guy seems to be most interested in in getting inside houses. So I would say, look, um yeah. first of all, I, I don't usually bring up the buyer brokerage agreement until after I have met them and I've uh, shown them the type of work that I do. Right. Okay. Whether I show them um, in the form of a buyer consultation, write some stats on the market, some trends on the market. I explain the buyer process. I ask them what's important to them about the process. I ask, hey, you know, tell me a little bit about your experiences working with agents in, in the past. Right. How do I win with you? How do I lose with you? I want to have a buyer consultation before I pitch the paperwork. Right. So I okay. kind of put the cart before the horse. Just a little bit, but it can be fixed. Okay. It, it can I, be fixed. It's not all about failing fast. Uh, yeah, it's not it's not tragic. Okay. So if this guy is resistant, he he outside of his commitment issues and probably a bunch of other issues, um he he's probably had a poor experience with an agent in the future in, or in the past. So I might ask him questions like, so tell me a little bit about how you've um worked with agents in the past. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um and by the way, you know what's the most important thing that you'll be, you'll be looking for in an agent? And this guy might say, um, well, I'm gonna work with the agent that sends me the home. I say, great, so tell me a little bit about the home because I will be sending you several homes every day until me and you sit at the closing table to get together. Well, you said, um, I, don't, I, don't want a, a, I don't want a daily emails of all these homes. Well, what, what is it, Corey, what, what is it that you want? What, what is the, what is the best way that I can help you right now? Right. Okay. Here, give, give me something. Oh, um, what well, I'm the buyer. I don't, I don't know what, his, where he's coming from. Um, just, well, just I just want crazy. the best home. That's because he's already crazy. So pretend like you're crazy. <laughs> I just, I just want the best home. The, 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 our forever, you know, my kids are two and four and you know we want to our house right now is already the best in our neighborhood because we've all we've upgraded it we've added a 16 by 24 porch and um you know the other homes near us don't have that uh, but we need more space so okay so corey what i'm hearing is you need more space mm -hmm. right you're acknowledging and validating I, I totally get that with a growing family so what specifically are you looking for in your next house uh, yeah, four to five, four bedrooms, five bedrooms would be great. I need one for an office. Okay, great. Um, 
So five so, bedrooms. And are are you um, looking to stay in the same school district, or is, is school district something that's on? Oh yeah, we need Talk a, to me we about need that. A, yeah, three. Uh, we need to be in the three zero zero six six zip code. Okay. So um, and. Um, so as far as space, I'd like to have between 3,000 and um, or 3,500 to 5,000 square feet. Okay, so 3,500 to 5,000 square feet, you need to be in 30066. Now, um, have you been looking out uh, at, at homes that, that are fitting that description? Where, where are you finding most of your information right now? Is that on know. a particular yeah. app or on a website or where, where are you currently lo looking? I have to ask him that. I'm going to write Keep that one going. down. Let's role play it. What's up? I, I see. I have, the, I have the similar situation. I have two, uh, two leads like that today. Um, seems today, what they do, they have the another agent too. And they talk with another agents. We'll get to that. Uh, let, let me, let me, let's finish the David. Let's finish the role play, and I'm I'm almost certain your your question will get addressed. Okay, Corey, keep going. Okay, um, I forgot where we were. Sorry. You were. Um, I was asking you where you're where you're looking. Where are you getting? Your oh, um, yeah. You know, I I just keep an eye out. You know, I have Zillow, and you know, I have different um, uh, emails. You know, you know, different search results that I, I check okay. frequently. And, um, you know, so I look at that and, um, I mean, everybody's a real estate agent. I mean, you yeah, know, when I, I met I, you, I, I was like, oh my gosh, another real estate agent. Yeah. That's, what, that's actually what he's, cause I was like, oh, he, cause they said, um, I said, oh, are you guys neighbors? Do you live in the neighborhood? Um, I'm, I'm stepping out for a minute. I'll go back in. Um, and he's, and they said, uh, well, no, my mom here, she lives in the neighborhood neighborhood, but we just love this community. It's just so family friendly and we'd love our kids to, to grow up in a, a place like this. So we're actually interested in finding a home in, in this neighborhood. Beautiful. Okay. So you're finding your data on Zillow and a bunch of emails and all that kind of stuff. So Corey, have you, have you seen any properties yet with a real estate agent? in person? Uh, yeah, I've seen, I've seen a couple. And, and were you working with an agent at that time? Was an agent the one that showed it to you or did you go at an open house or what? Um, I just, um, I, I don't know. You pick one. <laughs> um, I, I just called the agent that was listing it and, um, and they, they showed it to me. Okay. And, and I guess you didn't like that property. You weren't ready to move forward. Yeah. It just wasn't, you know, it's just, it's hard to find something around here that fits all our needs. Yeah. You know, you said everyone's an agent. There's a big difference between being an agent and working super hard to make sure that the agent um, delivers exactly the experience that a buyer is seeking. So tell me a little bit about what, what would you expect your agent to do for you? That's, that's a good question. I think um, probably, you know, I just need things to be, um, you know, the, the criteria I give you, um, you know, I want to make sure that those are the results are, that are delivered, that we, um, we, we are not having to, you know, our time isn't wasted. Okay. Um, so you're aware of how a buyer's agent is compensated, right? Yeah. Okay. So they're paid by the seller of the home that you ultimately pursue. Right. Are you also familiar with the, the, the listing agent, the person whose name is on the sign? That person has a commitment to protect the seller, not a commitment to protect the, the buyer. You're aware of that, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So if you find a home on Zillow or some other app or something and you call the listing agent, they're professionally trained to extract information from you to use for their client's benefit in a negotiation. Does that concern yeah, you? Yeah, I, I know all that because I've done all these transactions in my history and I'm super smart. Okay, great. So you're, I, I love working with super smart, um, experienced clients. Yeah, I know a lot. Beautiful. So what what is the, um, listen, I, I li like I said, I like working with people like you, Corey. So I'd like to help you. What is the most important thing that you need help with right now? You just want somebody to send you listings? <laughs> What, what, what is it that you're looking for? 
You know, we're not in a hurry because I can, we can stay in our home. We can, we can buy a home before we move into a home. Great. I was heading there in a second. So uh, uh, you already asked me if I was pre-approved. That doesn't, we're, we're, we're good. It doesn't matter. Okay. We're, we're all set there. Um, <clears throat> I just want to find the right home. And so we're not in a hurry until we get the right home. All right, so let's pretend like I just asked her some more questions about what that right home means, right? 3,500 to 5,000 square feet in a right. particular zip code. Um, so tell me, tell me more about that property. You said you built the big deck. Is that something that you'd like to have in your next house as well? Yeah, I really like that outdoor space. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Basement, do you need a basement for the children? Probably, yeah. I think they're gonna need some place to play inside if they can't be outside. Okay, and where does your family spend most of its time? Do you, do you spend more time like in the kitchen area? Do you spend more time, you know, all together watching TV? Like what space is, what, when you look at a brand new home, is there a particular space that you gravitate to based on the way your family kind of functions? Yeah, I mean, well, I do a lot of work in my office. Okay. Um, and then, um, you know, I like to watch a lot of football. Okay. And so we, you know, we'll, we'll spend time in the living room and, um, game day, you know, have lots of fun game days. Uh, the kids playing there. I'd like to have a playroom maybe for them, you know, a place where they can go. And so it's not disturbing the, the family space. Okay. What about yards? Is front yard important, backyard important? Are you looking for a home like level driveway? Does that matter? Um, do you want like wooded backyard, clear backyard? Can you, can you give me any more information about that? Because you like know, you're, you're you know, busy, right? You it got, doesn't really matter. But, yeah. I don't want to take you to, I don't want to send you properties that aren't a good match for you. I know your time is valuable. So I'm going to ask you a couple more really detailed questions so I All can right. very quickly eliminate whether it's going to be a waste of your time or not. So that's, right. why, that's why I'm asking these real detailed questions. It's for your benefit. So okay. we don't waste your, any of your time. I know you're busy. I got it. Okay. okay. What about the kitchen? Yeah, big kitchen, you know, ideally updated, but you know, on the lower end, we might have to put in some work uh, on the higher end. I'll expect it to be exactly the way we want it. Okay, and just to you're willing to move outside of this neighborhood. Okay, so as long as it's in 30066, is that right? Yeah, um, probably, um, you know, maybe not the, the Blackwell School District, but everything else, I think it's I could- 30066, not the Blackwell School District. Yeah, I think so. Beautiful. So I'm. I just. I. I took a quick uh, the um, search on FMLS, and I found there's only three homes that match that criteria right now. I'm available at two o'clock tomorrow, or we could do uh, Sunday at ten before the game starts. Just to quickly show you those three homes, we can knock them out probably in about an hour together, and uh, you'll get a chance to see how I work, and uh, we can determine if we're a good match for each other. Very worst that'll, that'll happen is you'll see the homes that, the only homes on the market right now that fit your criteria. And we can decide if, uh, if there's any um, potential of us helping each other out in the future. Would that be okay? Yeah, I'm gonna have to check with my wife. Great, okay, so um, I'll wait. You wanna check with her now? Uh, she's busy. She's busy, okay. So yeah. I'm gonna text you a couple of times and dates. Um, by the way, I, I can include your wife on the text. Let me, is it a, uh, it's, what, what is her number again? Heather, her name's Heather. And, Heather, okay. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yeah. But you know, she doesn't want, she's dealing with the kids. She doesn't want to be involved in this. Okay. So, um, I, you know, so I want to make sure that, uh, I, I can show you these properties, but I'm working with a lot of buyers and sellers that would probably want that time. So how quickly do you think you can get a confirmation? Um, I'll get back to you. I'll get back get to you. Back. Just send me a text. I'll, 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 I'll get back to you within, you know, I would say 15 minutes. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, I'll, uh, if I haven't, if I, if I have not heard from you by the end of tonight, I'll send you a quick little, quick little reminder. Does that sound good for you? Yeah, that sounds great. All right. Beautiful. Listen, I'm excited to uh, get an opportunity to meet you and your family and learn more about um, your, your motivation to move into a larger home and, um, and get to know you guys a little bit better. So I, I look forward to confirming the appointment by the end of the day. Thanks. Thank okay, you. so in some respects she was she was kind of standoffish and in some respects she was 
you know, I thought she'd say, I'll just get back to you, right? Instead, she said in 15 minutes, I'm like, damn, 15 minutes, that's fast, that's cool, right? But if she had said, um, I'll get back to you, I probably just would have sent the two homes and said, let's go see these, let's go buy, let's go take a look at these before somebody else buys them. Well, right. I sent him, I sent him the, um, the email. So I, I went ahead and sent an email with the, um, there were like six homes. I, you know, I looked at, I looked at them all and, um, called the list down to, um, to his parameters. So, and I, I sent that. So your suggestion would be don't send the list, tell him about him and I, I'll take him. So don't give him the information because that's. And this isn't, in 1984, you know, pre-internet, we had the secrets. Now we don't have any secrets, okay? Right, So right. we tell him there's two homes that fit the criteria. He could find those two homes in 10 seconds online. So it's right. not like we're hiding anything. There's no point in that, right? He's not looking for somebody to hide something. He's looking for somebody to share something. So you say, look, I, I'd love to help you. I'd love to meet you. Right. I, I've, I understand how important it is for you to get the exact space that you desire. I understand how important it is for you to be near your mother. I understand how important it is for you to have that deck and a finished space and a great office and a great space for game day. I love helping people achieve their real estate goals. I'm excited to meet you at two o'clock. Right. Look, if these people are standoffish, then like just give them what they want and move on to somebody else and check in with them the next day. Yeah. So, um, so would before, so my question is, should I go invest the time to show him a home? Um, or, you know, a few homes in an afternoon. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm fine with that. Um, if I don't have any guarantee of a, you know, a, a, an agreement. Um, um, I know this is not what you want to hear, but even if you were to sign that agreement and then find out that he, and then determine that he doesn't really want to work with you, he can terminate it. So, so it, might as well. Although it has its place in license law, it is largely a symbolic document, okay? Mm. There are things you can do and should do and can't do when it's signed versus when it's not signed. I'm not, I'm not, Melba, that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is if they don't wanna work with you and they're planning on ghosting you, it doesn't matter what they signed. Right. There's no guarantees until the cat check cashes. If you're not familiar with those properties and you've not been inside them, yeah. You go inside them with somebody who you have a chance to earn a commission check with. Right. Absolutely. I would take that chance. So um, a thought I had to, was um, later today, um, I could go, I could um, preview, preview, take some, uh, maybe a quick video and send it to them or something. Love that. Um, maybe make a little compilation. Yeah. Say, hey, I was in the area. Um, I saw this home and I, man, I thought it was an awesome opportunity. So I swung by and I wanted to show you what the, um, which room could be great for the big game. Yeah. Yeah. Sunday at 10, you'll be home by the time game starts. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like doing like a tiny bit more, tiny yeah. bit more than the next guy is willing to do. And to mm -hmm. get specific with what, what makes their heart how they make decisions, right? They make decisions based on family space and games and office, speak to the things that are relevant to them. Right. right? And have some fun. Like if, if you take a cool little video and you see a property and the guy writes you back and says, I don't like you. I want to work with a man or I want to work with somebody older. Or, I want to work with somebody younger or whatever, then screw him. Let's go find a different client, right? So right. have some fun, okay? We're, we got to have a lot of it bats here. Yep. Thank you. Um, one other question. Um, so buyers agents, um, I had a conversation with somebody yesterday and they're saying is, you know, apart from right now in a seller's market, um, I, you know, in a seller's market, we can see how a buyer's agent is very helpful. Um, in, uh, in a buyer's market is the same true. Yes. And if so, why? Bye. Well, a buyer's market, uh, I'm sorry, a buyer's agent is the person that is that is uh, hired to, to um, 
represent and protect the buyer in the transaction. So just because it happens to be a seller's market or it happens to be a buyer's market, all, all that tells me is there's a lot going on in the transaction and the person needs professional representation. So in a buyer's market, and it well, no matter which type of market it is, there's still a thousand things that have to get done in the transaction. And there's a lot of places that they could make an ethical uh, issue, a disclosure issue, a contract issue, a legal issue. That's why you need representation. So regardless of why, whether it's a buyer or seller's market, um, the, the buyer or seller could make missteps that could be caught very, very costly. And that's why they need independent representation. But yeah, well, of course they need it um, once they get to the transaction, but until that point, um, you know, until they find the property, like do they, I think the argument that I was, um, or the, you know, discussion I was having was, was that it was, not necessary to find the home. Look, the real estate agents used to like pre-internet, they, a lot of times they would be paid to find the home. That's not really what we do anymore. There's, there's, there's so many ways that the home can be found. Like if the buyer, if you're my buyer and you think that the reason why I'm getting a big check is because I found the home and you happen to be the one that found the home, you're going to be pissed the whole time. Right. Okay. Our job is to execute over the entire experience, okay? Is to connect all of the different vendors and professionals that are involved and make sure everyone in, does their job in a timely manner, that no deadlines are missed, that we analyze the market to protect your investment, that we finance uh, the property wisely, right? That you get great terms and a great price. Finding the home, dude, that's the easy part. I'm not paid at all to find the home. There's, a, In fact, there's a good chance you'll be the one to find the home, okay? But if I tell you that during the buyer consultation, when you find the home and say, hey, Bill, let's go see this when I found it. Then at the closing table, when I walk away with 10 grand, you're like, high fives all around. We found the home. We're a team. But if I let you believe that my job and I'm paid to find the home and you find the home, you're going to be pissed off the whole entire experience. Yeah, that's why you have to you have to teach these people what you do and what you don't do. Mm -hmm. Right? Make sense? Yeah. Thank you. That was great. All right, y'all. Um, don't forget launch mastermind today at one o'clock, one o'clock to two o'clock, right here. Um, we can talk more through these types of scenarios. Remember, uh, just a quick little note, David. I think we kind of covered some of the things you were talking about, but. You, you want to find out if they're working with another agent. And then even if they are, you might say, you know, have you committed in writing to working with that person? Have you signed a buyer, buyer brokerage agreement? More often than not, they'll say no. Um, and you say, great. So tell me, what is the most important thing a realtor can do for you? Right? Because what you're trying to do is figure out, um, is this, I'm going to do what you want me to do. And if that other agent hasn't asked you what's in, or hadn't asked you what's important to them, then they're obviously not going to do it. And so if I have a better idea of how to serve you better, then I will serve you better than the other person you're courting. And I will win. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yep. But if you don't ask those questions, then it's a crapshoot. You don't know if you're winning or not. Make sense? All right, you guys. I'll see you at one. Thanks, Bill. Have a good right. day. Thank you, Bill. Bill.